we're Ed and Lisa Young here. We're here to talk about the creative marriage with the Creative Marriage Podcast, where we talk about keeping your love alive no matter what life throws at your marriage. Well, today we're talking about a subject that is the most popular subject in the world. It's got to be, I guess, sex, S-E-X. A lot of times when you even get into the subject of sex, Lisa, sex and marriage, people are like, oh, no, because it gets quiet. Yeah, because we have a lot of issues that we're bringing to the bed, literally. And it's it's just a, a very emotionally charged, volatile subject. So I would tell everybody just chillax. Just OK, let's just just listen. Just say, God, what do you want to say to me about this? And we're going to talk about our lives. We're going to talk about what sex is and what sex isn't. I like sex, though. I do. <laughs> I especially like the I word. You know, I like the word sex, S-E-X. So if you're, you know, you're driving or maybe you're in your kitchen, whatever, working, or maybe you're somewhere else, whatever, uh, you're working out, just, just kind of do this silently. Give me an S. S. Give me an E. E. Give me an X. X. What's that spell? Sex. <laughs> sex okay. Sex, sex. Sex. I like S stands for it's supernatural. Yes. And it's- everybody wants to have supernatural sex, I'm sure. But I'm talking about it. It is from God, designed by God. God put sex into the equation of life before we ever sinned. So we need to understand that, own that, accept that God invented sex. So if you have an issue with it, don't don't send me an email. Try some knee mail. I'll slap somebody. Appropriately. Yeah. And and, and talk to God so about it. So what's the E? So, so E stands for it should be exciting and enjoyable. Oh, How that's that? good. Yes. E. And then X? It's not X rated. It's God created. Oh, I love it. Amen. So hopefully when you hear the word sex or you think about that word, you're going to think about it with God's perspective Mm -hmm. because we've allowed culture to hijack the the whole content of sex. And God invented it, and he put this in play for marriages to enjoy, Mm -hmm. and it's not X-rated. So supernatural, enjoyable, and not X-rated. Yeah, so so people— in our culture, we've just, again, taken sex and decaffeinated it. We said, oh, it's just sex. We're just dogs in heat. We're just spawning salmon. No, it's much more important than that. If you think, for example, let me let me get a little bit, um, uh, I'm getting serious, a little bit deep here. If you think about the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one, oneness throughout the Bible, oneness. Individual but separate oneness, the Trinity. In Genesis 2.24, for this cause, a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave, or to be joined in some translation, to his wife, and the two shall become one. There's oneness in marriage. When a couple in marriage has sex, there's oneness. You don't know where one begins and the other ends. There is oneness. So when when we're having sex in marriage, we're actually reflecting the Trinity. Wow. How about that? Wow. And here's something else. I think it's it's even like an act of worship. Now I'm not trying to be weird, but it, it is an act of um expressing our love to our spouse and we're we're reflecting this amazing gift that God's given us. So the next time you want to make love to your spouse, don't say that. Just say, let's worship. (laughs) Also too, I believe sex is, um, it's way more multifaceted than most. Yeah. It's not just sex. Sex is not just sex. It's not just physical. And that's where for a marriage to have great sex, they've got to think about sex the way God intended it. There you go. If you decaffeinate sex, I mean, who wants decaffeinated sex? We, no want, we want, you know, caffeine. In our, yeah, in our in our culture, though, and again, um, we we've taken sex and we've taken it out of context, and 
content out of context leads to chaos and we're seeing so much chaos in our world today when it comes to sex i'll never forget what happened speaking about sex we had a uh, a very popular x-rated uh film star an adult film star come to our church several years ago and there was a a television show that wanted to do and they did an interview with her telling about why she's a porn star and then me telling her this porn star about what the bible says regarding sex it was a a very very compelling and interesting conversation because she shared with me and the cameras and everything and other people in the room about why she does x-rated films adult films and then i told her just basically what the bible said about sex and during this interview it was it was really really strange because it was strangely amazing and amazingly strange i could say she began to tear up and literally weep because she had never heard god's take on sex when she exited our church we had some people walking with she and her and her manager she she turned to her manager and she said this what if he's right mm, that's so powerful. and i've never forgotten that here's a girl who is this adult film star and she was totally broken totally just devastated because i was just sharing her the good news of of, of sex and what god says about it yeah she didn't understand mm -mm. the depth of it that's right. So in order for us to have the proper perspective of sex in our marriage and to, to actually do it creatively, uh, I mean, I mean mm -hmm. that very seriously, um, we have to have God's perspective. So let's just talk a little bit about God's perspective and what are some sex builders, because God wants us to build a great sexual relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, sex and intimacy go hand in hand because we're intimate on many levels. We're intimate um, in our conversations and communication. We're intimate with our recreation, how we enjoy each mm -hmm. other's company. But ultimately, it leads to the greatest of intimacy, which is the act of sex. So what are some sex busters and sex builders that we can talk well, about? Well, one sex buster is you have an unrealistic idea about sex, and that relates to the adult film star because now just you can – just touch a couple of buttons mm -hmm. and you can see sexual images and you can see men and women doing things that no one can compare to. It's so easy. I know women view porn a lot too. It's so easy for men to, to view it because it's, um, it's, it's, it's a little bit lazy and we tend to lean toward laziness. We can look at these images have the sexual hit and we don't have to worry about communication reconciliation. We don't have to worry about um, romance. We can just, you know, masturbate and watch and watch porn. And it's, it's, it's really pornography is not the, the thing that has given us some realistic expectations, but it's one of the, one things. of them also, you know, a lot of, a lot of things we've seen, um, on on television, movies, books. I mean, it goes. And Ed, it's gotten worse and worse. And, on, yeah. and I, I mean, I hate to be like oh, fatalistic, and but if you go back twenty years ago, things that were allowed on television are not allowed now. It's just a free for all. Yeah. And you can see anything at any time, and especially with the smartphone and all of that. So on the one hand, technology has afforded us a lot of great innovative steps toward the future, yeah. but then it's also created, you know, a lot of opportunities for us to fall so, into this trap. So many people just have these unrealistic views. So we need yeah. to have a realistic view. It's a sex builder see through the secular smoke screen because because uh, the secular smoke screen is smoke and mirrors it it's not yeah. it's not real so so we need to look at what god says regarding sex it's sex is an opportunity for husbands and wives to experience greater intimacy and mutual discipleship. Mm -hmm. Can you believe the yeah. word discipleship is mentioned with intimacy and sex? I know. But when we are fulfilling one another's needs, 
Well, maybe we can call it discipleship instead of worship. Now we call it worship and discipleship when we have okay. sex. That may be so. But we're going to be judged, Christians I'm talking about, based on how we fulfilled our spouse's sexual needs. That's how about what that? sex buster number two is. Yes, it is. You don't understand your spouse's sex drive. And I will tell you, um, I grew up in a home that we didn't talk about sex. I mean, the no. word pregnant was barely mentioned. Oh. I guess we were really prudish, but um, we just didn't talk about it. And I wouldn't say prudish. Your your parents, Lisa, came from that silent generation. Yeah, that's and that's you just what did better, not, you better just said. didn't talk about it. Yeah, we didn't talk about it. So, I and don't we know. talk about it now. Our culture too much. So For, yeah, possibly. But maybe, I, maybe I, I pray I though know. that I churches. I mean, churches need need okay, to talk about churches it. Churches need to be the place. Yes. Where we hear the family, sex. then the church. Yeah, the, I'm sorry. The family. Family number one. Church number two. Family number one. Church number two. We should be the experts about sex. We should be the ones to get out there. We should be the ones to take the initiative to talk about it. That's right. So here's the sex buster, that we don't understand our spouse's sex drive. So men and women have different sex drives, generally speaking. No way. Yes. Yes. I and, know. and one thing that I believe... And here you go. Rarely are, are, are you and your spouse equally in the mood. I mean, equally hormonal, equally, you know, love is in the air. I mean, yeah... Your honeymoon, maybe you go to Hawaii on a vacation or whatever. Uh, you tend to be more both in yeah, the mood but, at the same Yeah, but just time. a day in and day out on the rugged plains of reality, one is usually in the mood more than the other. Yes. So and I've it, learned and, to say no to you a bunch. And if you compare it to like a race, yeah, a guy, pretty much his sex drive is a sprint. And the That's true. girls is more like a 5K. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a little bit slower. Uh, we need a little bit of romance, a little bit of creativity, and and that's kind of sets the stage. So, so you... sex buster number two is you don't understand your spouse's sex drive. We need to understand and study our spouse. Yes. Yeah, so what's so, the sex so builder? Again, again, if one has a stronger sex drive, it's better to defer to that to person, lean in. to that spouse, yeah. as opposed to... No, I don't feel it as much as you, and, and you're going to have to to be on this sexual fast with me. So the sex you know? builder is to dial into your spouse's sex drive. Too often, uh, we act like sex is a nuisance. Women maybe would say, "I'm tired," you know, "I I I'm just not in the mood," whatever. And we have to realize that we are our spouses. Fulfillment center, if you will. We're the, Am Whoa. I don't know, the Amazon. Woo, I don't know if that's a, center. but we're, it, it's my privilege to yes. get to meet your needs. Mm -hmm. It's your privilege to get to meet my needs. Yes. If I don't have that perspective, you know, what is that saying to my spouse that they're supposed to look elsewhere? No, I get to be, I am privileged mm -hmm. to be the um, object. Yes. If you, and if you will. And you I know, mean in a good way. And this, and this, uh, I, I want to stop here just for a second because. In this next podcast, we're going to talk about how often should you do it. I mean, that is a major question. How much should you, you know, you have to figure that out. Um, um, and, and we're going to help you figure that out because the Bible has um, a lot to say about it. And we're also going to say, how do you say no? How do you say I'm not in the mood? Let's don't, let's don't. There are, don't, of, yeah, we're there are not, a so, lot of things yeah. to talk about when you're talking That's about right. sex so, and so, marriage so, and fulfilling each other's needs. I just want everybody to understand, God thought sex up. It was his idea. God invented it. Let's go back to creativity. And we talk about this in the creative marriage. And Jesus modeled it, the intimacy between the bridegroom and the bride, and people need it. We need sex. We are sexual beings. Just say it. I'm a sexual being. All right. How do I have these needs fulfilled? How do I fulfill them in the context of marriage? Well, we're going to get into it more and more as we talk about creative intimacy, creative sex, part two. So if you're liking this podcast, I know you are. I am. Subscribe and leave us a five-star review. That's right, five stars. Your reviews help get the word out. I'll and see you next time. And we want to get the word out. That's right. That's right. I'll see you next time on the Creative Marriage 
Podcast.